Hi, it's The Wire. It is August the 3rd, 2024. Always, 1776.com, a free site. Also, wealthspinning.blogspot.com. Let me give you a tip. If you are visiting those sites on a mobile device, what you want to do is to change your browser setting to desktop version. You'll actually see a different version of the page with many more links. Let's talk about a recent development that really does warrant your attention. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, let me uh, say some things. We'll see how this video ages. Right, but let me say some things that I believe are true. And let me um, make some points here. The first is that I do believe that Donald Trump is going to be the next president of the United States. Right? We're not talking about what should happen. We're talking about what I believe will happen. What I want people to do uh, is to look hard at states like Pennsylvania, I understand there is a distinct possibility Kamala Harris picks Pennsylvania's governor, Josh Shapiro, uh, out of recognition that Pennsylvania has a lot of electoral votes, but also out of recognition that she needs help in that state. Newsflash, she needs help right now in states like Michigan. Understand, in this, Kamala Harris's biggest moment, Right, She's been appointed the nominee of the Democratic Party for the presidential race in her biggest moment, where she, in some polls, has moved past Donald Trump. Let's just say I believe in reversion to the mean. I believe that some of the excitement is going to subside. It does in presidential races as voters find out more about you. I think people are going to find out that Kamala Harris has taken some positions that might be viewed as a little bit on the extreme side with regard to things like, for example, gun control. Right? Her talk about equity um, isn't going to go over well with some people who believe in free markets and who believe that the owners of capital should be the ones getting the equity upside in a business, not third parties, right? I know there's been a lot of talk about stakeholder capitalism. Just understand that argument is dead on arrival in many circles. Right. Also, let's say Kamala Harris does pick Josh Shapiro. I know there are Democrats watching this video who are concerned about Pennsylvania. Um, Josh Shapiro is very pro-Israel. I'm just telling you, and I speak with you know, some of my close friends are in this wing. There is a wing of the Democratic Party right now that is completely outraged over what's happening in Gaza, right? that's going to have a problem when they find out how pro-Israel Josh Shapiro is, especially when Kamala Harris herself has issued statements saying we're going to back Israel in any armed conflict. Right? So let me just say, I believe you're dealing with peak Kamala Harris right now. There's the enthusiasm of uh, someone other than Biden, we'll call it. Right? Someone who doesn't look like they are suffering from old age. There's a new energy, a new vitality with Kamala Harris. Also, there are many people who like what Biden has done and view Kamala Harris as an integral part of his administration. I understand all that. And of course, there is the side that should not be ignored. America has never had a female president. Kamala Harris is on the verge, it seems, of being the first elected female president of the United States. She's also a woman of color. 
right? You know, whether you view her as Indian or Jamaican, right? For the record, I'm both, myself. Whether you view her as Indian or Jamaican, this is a major moment for people of color, right? So Kamala Harris right now is getting a lot of attention. She's getting a lot of votes. She has passed Trump in some polls, right? At the end of the day, in my opinion, people are going to revert to what they know. Donald Trump has already been president of the United States. Much of the Trump is this, Trump is that talk is fake, right? There aren't concentration camps all over the United States. Trump is actually gaining the black male vote, right? He has more black male support now than he did when he first ran for president the first time, right? So a lot of this, you know, Trump is Hitler. Uh, talk about a terrible historical figure uh, to be compared to. Um, I think Trump supporters understand that there's something called Trump derangement syndrome and that many people suffer from it. Right? I also think the idea that J.D. Vance has some kind of terrible past and J.D. Vance, you know, uh, himself is some kind of racist um, is somewhat discredited by the fact that he's married to a person of color. Right? Also, his wife, quite frankly, looks like she has a much higher IQ than the former editor of the Yale Law Review does. Right? Look at her record. So let me just say this. It's the great Gil Scott Heron. Know that name. Research that name. Who famously said, the revolution will not be televised. I personally believe that some of the biggest meetings that happen in politics don't show up in the paper. You have one such meeting, and it's huge. It involves my congressman, who I disagree with on a lot of issues. Ro Khanna, remember that name, right? I'm convinced, I'm convinced that this guy one day could well be president of the United States, right? He has stepped in. This is a guy who, in the Senate race in California, supported Barbara Lee. Right? This is a guy who shows up on Young Turks, and they love to have him. He's one of the premier, we'll call him leftist thinkers, in the United States. Right? Ro Khanna believes that the Democrats, and I, I believe he's correct with this, that the Democratic Party right now has a cryptocurrency problem. That people like Elizabeth Warren, have scared off a lot of people who believe in sound money, who believe in Bitcoin, who want Bitcoin embraced by the regulatory climate here in the United States, and who also realize that Bitcoin is just <laughs> the front runner to what could be a digital asset revolution, especially at this time of $35 trillion debts in the United States and the dollar under pressure, right? Who knows what happens in September if the Fed announces a 50 basis point rate cut in terms of the inflationary result that might have on the American economy. Well, Rokana has put together a Zoom meeting that's going to happen in a couple of days. And apparently it's going to involve some of the biggest names in crypto, as well as a Democratic nominee for the presidency, Kamala Harris. Now this is a big moment, right? As you know, I feel Donald Trump is going to win the election. In fact, I believe Donald Trump is probably going to clear 310 electoral votes, right? I don't think the pollsters have this right, right? To quote Malcolm, I believe the chickens will come home to roost in the next few weeks of this election, right? Some questions will be raised. Some folks are going to 
wonder out loud whether um, you can have a primary season, have people running in that primary season, and then have the president tap someone who was not a candidate for the presidency to be the nominee, and then have that person anointed as the nominee without an open convention. Right? There are going to be a lot of questions. But let me just say this. This meeting, whether you think Kamala Harris wins the presidential race or not, is going to be huge because it could recalibrate the Democratic Party's position toward cryptocurrency. Understand, one of the best moves Trump has made this election cycle was to embrace cryptocurrency openly. We know he's been involved with NFTs and stuff like that for a while. But here he embraced it, said he wants the United States to be the Bitcoin epicenter uh, globally, uh, showed up at a Bitcoin conference and gave a speech. Understand, Many in the Bitcoin community, many in the digital asset community, and we're not talking about just the spot ETF approvals for Bitcoin and Ethereum, right? You know who you are. There's a Solana crowd out there. There's a Caspa crowd out there. There's a Polkadot crowd out there. There's a Link crowd out there. Let's just say the crypto world has a lot of communities. Right? People are anxiously looking at sites like DeFiLama.com for the total value locked under some of these protocols. Right? So let's just say this meeting could lead to Kamala Harris announcing her support of cryptocurrency. Understand, Donald Trump has already announced his support of Bitcoin. Right? The Democrats and Republicans, folks, they have a stranglehold on the presidency. Right? We haven't had a president who hasn't been a Democrat or Republican for a very long time. If you remove the resistance to digital assets in the Democratic Party, especially when Kamala Harris is part of the incumbent administration. In other words, it is August. There's no reason to wait until November to put forth a proposal to have a spot Solana ETF, right? Or to make other steps to help parts of the crypto sphere. Let me point out too, understand how under pressure in the last few weeks, the digital asset environment has been. Riot. Excuse me, Riot. Turn on a camera, suddenly it's hard to pronounce words. Riot is down more than 20% on the year. Marathon Digital Holdings. These are major miners, folks. Is down more than 20%. Understand, Marathon is very interesting because they not only mine Bitcoin, they mine Caspa. Right? Do the research. Recognize what could be a big part of the future. In other words, these miners are extremely well positioned. And yet they're struggling. So understand, if Kamala Harris who's in a highly contested race that I believe she's going to lose, who's under pressure in the Rust Belt right now, even in states like Michigan, look at the polling, that have popular Democratic governors, right? Look at New Jersey. Understand, New Jersey is an interesting state that twists and turns. If you remember Tom Keene, if you remember Chris Christie, Donald Trump is doing well, according to polls right now, in New Jersey. These are states with a lot of electoral votes. These are states that Democrats rely upon in presidential elections. And I know Michael Moore wrote a great Substack piece recently where he talked about the dominance in terms of the popular vote 
that Democrats have in recent presidential elections. Right? But understand, even the popular vote, which isn't the point of our presidential elections, the point is the electoral college. But even in the popular vote, I believe Kamala Harris is going to face significant pressure, especially if she loses states like Michigan, and if she picks someone other than Josh Shapiro, possibly Pennsylvania, right? So uh, this meeting, and Ro Khanna, I think I mentioned he's my congressman, understand he has a lot of support, and he's left of the Democratic Party, folks. He has a lot of support in Silicon Valley. It's one of the underreported stories in the United States. Ro Khanna, a person of color who is a leftist, somehow has a lot of Silicon Valley people flocking to his campaign. Right? He, he already, at a young age, is a bit of a Bay Area institution. The power he wields, the ability to pick up the phone and arrange to have some cryptocurrency bigwigs agree to a Zoom call with Kamala Harris on short notice is impressive. I hope this meeting makes the paper. You need to pay close attention to it, especially if it leads to a pivot by the Democratic nominee toward cryptocurrency. Now, one of the reasons she's going to have a problem, just food for thought, is because you do have resistance in the Democratic Party to cryptocurrency. I was astonished at the sudden pivot, and it was sudden, toward approval of a spot Ethereum ETF, when keep in mind, Ethereum is proof of stake. It's not proof of work. You don't have a mining community for Ethereum. Ethereum's much more centralized than, let's say, Bitcoin or Casper, right? And so let's recognize that Kamala Harris does face an uphill battle with the parts of the Democratic Party that want crypto heavily regulated. Understand, Trump has already said that if elected president, he's going to give SEC Chairman Gary Gensler the boot. Right? Understand the crypto people believe strongly in markets. Don't believe in fiat currency. Believe in market competition. Believe that DeFi is going to supplant traditional finance. They view a lot of these big banks as being led by characters who belong in a prehistoric museum section, more so than in 2024 America. So what, in fact, Ro Khanna is doing is he's bringing one of the most capitalistic parts of the United States into a Zoom meeting with Kamala Harris. Right, folks? There's going to be a lot of skepticism. The end result might be not only a pivot by Harris toward greater acceptance of crypto, but possibly some things being done between now and November to further legitimate cryptocurrency as a means of exchange in the United States. Right? Let's remember, if you go back to the 1970s, at a time of rampant inflation, you had Gerald Ford Right? An unelected president who, believe it or not, was our president during the biennial. Well, just understand, Gerald Ford allowed, for the first time in decades, private ownership of gold. Folks, gold would explode in the 1980s. The people in the know who understood the difference between 
limited supply gold and fiat currency made a mint right that change went unnoticed if you were outside of that economic circle don't be outside of this one this like Gerald Ford's decision in the 70s and let me just say he's one of the more interesting figures in American history right he was on the Warren Commission Google his background in fact he was the FBI mole on the Warren Commission well anyway let me just say that action by Gerald Ford in the later 70s right was one of the biggest moments politically in the 1970s especially if you're a gold bug right I'm telling you many of the crypto community have the same beliefs this is a major moment for the United States this is a major issue to many including myself I'm assuming Kamala Harris would not have agreed to appear on the zoom call if she's going to be hostile to crypto if she's just going to support the status quo and show no movement at all in her position then why meet with crypto bigwigs I think this is a watershed moment that's not being televised in American politics this is one of those moments that could shift the election depending on how it's received Give it a look, be online, figure out what comes out of this meeting put together by Ro Khanna. That's a name you need to know, right? He is one of these stories who somehow isn't getting noticed, right? He's one of the most important members of the House of Representatives. Understand, he has a bill that the party has not backed that would have put rent controls into place now as I said I disagree with him on a lot of issues including that one but understand this is a guy who's not talking he's doing and what he's done now is brought together leaders in the crypto community and Kamala Harris on a zoom call that's gonna happen in a couple of days Keep an eye on that meeting and how it's reported. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.